Hey, this is Mac, and um, I'm going to try to demonstrate a trade here if I ever get a setup. Um, I actually recorded two trades, and um, somehow I accidentally deleted them. So um, and I can't, I can't find the file. I don't know if I, I thought I paused it, and I think I stopped it, and uh, I didn't save it, and so I lost the recording. But I'm gonna try to see if I can get another one going here. Notice what I did here. I drew this trend line right off of these lows right here. And then uh, drug that up. Actually, it looked like it was a little spike in channel, but we went higher. I'm going to see if maybe it's a two-tier channel. It hadn't been confirmed yet, but that's how I got this trend line. And we'll see if we get a setup over here or not. Hopefully, we'll get a second entry short or something here and get a chance to, to trade this. But uh, if you back out here and look at the big picture, it's a range day. And notice we've bounced down here every time, and we've turned down here most every time. We did have a failed breakout, but it still failed. It went a little higher than what normally, but the volatility is higher. So, but now we're headed back to the lows. Generally, you want to try to get in as close to these highs going short or as close to the lows going long. But that doesn't always work out that way. And this is a big enough trend that where we can uh, trade the, you can have a trend within and we can trade it. So let's just see if we get a chance to go short here, if this trend line confirms or not. Uh, I don't know that it will, but if it does, I'll add this to my video. I'm gonna try to do this and talk uh, talk about a few other things today and let this serve as our daily video. So, okay, we got a first entry short right now. Notice the new low, we worked higher, we broke lower. Let's see if we can go higher and get a second entry short. I may pause this thing just to keep it from getting too long here. Um, but we'll see what, what happens. Um, but I'm going to tell you, a few, I'm going to talk about a few other things while we're kind of waiting here. It looks like, uh, looks like we may get a shot at it here. Now we could have, this could be a spike in channel. We got a break and a new leg down, but we, cause we haven't confirmed this yet, but if it comes up here and confirms it and gives us a nice setup on a second entry short, I'm going to take it and we'll see what happens. Um, We could also have a little double test here. Notice we made that high, we test it once, and we're coming back and testing it again. So if we turn down from here, notice that I got this little, we're not quite back to the trend line yet. I'm gonna go ahead and put a order in there. But you see how quickly I was able to do that. And I did it in advance. I don't know that we're going to have a second entry here, but if it turns down right there, we're going to have a second entry short. And there we go. I'm going to move my stop up above the signal bar. Actually, that's way up here. I'm sorry. All right, we're moving, we're moving. And we'll let it play out. I'll either be right or wrong here. We'll see what happens. We're bouncing there an awful lot. Now we ended up kind of with a doji there. So we're really just kind of going sideways here. So I might have been a little early. And that happens sometimes. So you have to judge that. But I was wanting to make a trade so badly here. see what happens and this is another reason I hate to record my videos because it, you really get distracted and you do make mistakes and so I feel pretty confident we're going lower here so we'll see we haven't quite scalped out yet I'm gonna scalp out 15 and I'll save five for runners you just have to be patient all right, we're out. Our runners are at break even. I'm actually going. 
do it break even plus one and that's not much of a runner I've got right there I don't want to get in a long trade but we'll still get several points out of that come on baby and there we go and I actually got uh, I think I got three I think that was three point three or four point runner there so you just saw me get a point on 15 contracts on the second entry short. You saw how I did it. You saw that I didn't get nervous and let it shake me out when it tried to go higher one more time there, because it'll do that. That's why we put our stop up here. But if see, if you'd put your stop anywhere else, you'd have got stopped out there on a good trade. And you don't want that to happen. So your stop has to go above the signal bar. Actually, ideally, you'd like to put it above that bar because you really got even more but notice what happened there we had a trip a double test I probably would not have taken that trade not being back to what I think is a trend line because I don't even know this trend line is valid yet it hadn't we hadn't even got a second touch much less a confirmation but the reason I ended up taking that trade was the double test here remember the market tends to to move in twos and test things in twos I'll explain this to you. But notice we came up, made that high. We came back, we tested it once. We came back, we tested it twice. That's a fairly bullish bar on a second entry short. I took it, and you just saw I made 15. I made 15 points off the scalp, and then I had five contracts that got three more. So there's another. So I just made 30 points right there in less than five minutes. I mean, it's really that it's it, it, and you see how simple that was. And, th and this is the main reason I wanted to film this video, because you see how easy I made that look. I made that look pretty easy and that wasn't even a great trade or a great setup. But I still made it look pretty easy. And that's why you can't you can't let Internet marketers make videos and make it look easy and you come and do it because it's not easy. And I, that's the real point I wanted to make. I could sit here and make these videos all day and post them, and people would probably roll in here by the droves, and then two weeks from two, three weeks, or a month from now, they're mad at me because they blew a trading account. I mean, I'm getting emails every day from people that, that actually came over to us because they saw Michael Shin's video first, and they believed what they saw from him, how good and easy it looked so they're going to come buy my stuff because they know that they really stole their stuff from me but the point i'm trying to make is those guys are making it look easy it's not easy if it was easy they wouldn't be over there making videos they'd be trading and making a killing they wouldn't be making videos and trying to sell them convince you to come buy them those guys are not traders they're internet marketers and there's a there's a lot of other guys out there just like them, and they give this business a really bad name and make this business look really, really shady. So, um, and that's not to say that all marketers, people that sell trading stuff, are shady. There's some good ones out there, but most of them, when you see those kind of videos, and them, t if they tell you it's easy, and they tell you all you got to do is take their course, and you're going to be making $500 a day easy run as fast as you can go folks run 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 because this is not easy you have to be able to read this chart basically what is going on here is this chart talks to you it, it's speaking a language the problem is it's speaking a language that you probably don't know yet it takes a long time to learn to speak a language and let's just assume let's just assume that you're a native english speaker and you don't know anything about chinese there's several, I think there's several dialects of Chinese, but I, I'm not, I don't even know them. I couldn't tell you a Chinese word from a Korean word or a, a, a Taiwanese word or whatever the different languages are. I wouldn't know one from there. They all sound alike to me because I don't know that language. So I would have a hard time walking in a room full of people speaking a, a Chinese language and knowing what the heck was going on. I might figure out by their actions or a word or two here or, or what they're doing here and there and, and get a little gist of what they're talking about but for the most part I would be lost and so 
assume when you turn on this chart, you're walking into a room with something going on here and the people are speaking a language you don't understand. It's a language though. This chart speaks a language. And if you learn this language, this is a lot easier. It's pretty easy. But if you don't know the language, you're, you're just throwing darts at a board. And if you're throwing darts at a board, guess what? You're a gambler. And if you're gambling, you do not make it in this business. Gamblers don't make it in this business. Only seasoned traders that understand the language of the charts, that understand what the price action is telling them, survive at this. So, so don't the you know the other the really the thing I'm trying to address is all the emails I'm getting with people that are frustrated and they haven't been doing this very long and they're frustrated. If you're frustrated now, you you will give up. People come into this with unrealistic expectations. I will tell you the real expectations. This is going to take you a couple of years, minimum. Look, when I started doing this, I started doing it full time, and I did it every day full time, and it took and I and I was spending 16 hours, 16 to 18 hours a day trading and studying. I was bound and determined. And it still took me two years. So imagine if you're working on this part time or picking it up here and putting it down, picking it up again, putting it down, pick it. It's going to take you a long time. Trust me, when you get there, it's worth it, but it's not easy. And I'm probably me and maybe a two or three other people will tell you that because most of these people that are telling you it's easy are trying to sell you something. You don't see me advertise. You don't see me market. You don't see me try to beg people to buy my stuff. I, even when people email me right now, I tell them, this isn't easy. Make sure you know what you're doing. Here's the real expectations. And I tell them, most of them don't listen. Most of them don't hear it or they don't want to hear it. And they, they think they're going to be different and they do it anyway. But if you come into this with the right expectations and you have the time to put in, you know, you have the ability to put in the time and effort it takes. You can succeed at this, but it's not easy, people. Anybody tells you it is, like those guys that are putting those videos on YouTube and showing you these easy trades. I just showed you an easy trade. And uh, trust me, that what that's not. It's not as easy as it looked in this video. And so. I want to get that apart, that point apart. I want to read an email. Just as I was doing this, I got an email from somebody, and it makes so much sense. But really, what you have to do is wait on prices to get to the places. Notice how I had to be patient there and wait on that setup. And even then, I was a little bit early because it took another jog back up and made a lower high. But the point I'm trying to get is or trying to make is you got to be patient and wait for prices to come to the key entry points. That's where the setups are. I waited on this to make a double test at a key entry point, which was this support, uh, this resistance across here. And the, you got a double test off the EMA as well. I didn't mention that, but you can't just look, be constantly scanning, looking for an entry. You got to be patient. Notice how I just waited and it finally came back and gave me a second entry and gave me a double test and a double test of the EMA and it set it up for me, but I had to be patient. Most of your entries are going to be at the key entry points. Where is that today? Let me back out here. Your two main key entry points so far today are the resistance of the range and the support of the range, but you're not going to get a lot of setups there because it's a pretty big range. So, but when it gets down here, this was the, this was a great setup right here. A nice second entry. I show you this every day. We've had this repeat pattern almost every day. We come back down here, we test this. It gives you a break and then a second entry long and you're a long way away from the EMA. I tried to trade this one, but it happened so fast. I couldn't, I, or, sorry. I tried to record this one, but notice that we had this trend working. Now you got your first break and then it shoots down as Gives you a first entry long, bounces right off the support, gives you a second entry long. This is a little aggressive, so don't go try to do, try to do this, but I just want to show it to you because I've showed it to you every day. And you're, you got a, there's a good bit of room in there between that EMA, so you know prices are probably at least going to come to the EMA, even if we're going to go lower. So you buy there, 
you get a runner easily and this thing takes off and you can ride this all the way back to the top again or ride it till you get however many points you want to get out of it the extra three to five or maybe you exit where the resistance is across there whatever but it was easy trade and if you didn't take that one a few minutes later you got a second entry right here notice the new high first entry pull back and then when it broke above those little two bar matching high that's the second entry long so there's you another chance and you got another runner even when it came back here it wouldn't have taken out your runner so you had to be patient it comes back to the trend line here but guess what you don't get a setup so just wait and look a little bit later you get a higher low here it's pretty close to the resistance but all at the same time there's still enough room to get out it doesn't look like much room but this is just so much volatility there's still a lot of room it was an easy trade though and then guess what you get another second entry right here at the key entry point but you had to wait for all that to happen again so keep that in mind uh, the idea is to be patient and wait on prices to come back to these key entry points you can't just be scanning for a trade all the time just looking to enter anywhere all the magic happens at the key entry points I'm gonna say it again where are the key entry points resistance support and these trend lines are just slanted support and resistance and then you got a midline in the middle that look how prices were playing off both sides of that be careful entering there and you don't really want to be buying a downtrend you want to be looking for shorts I had another gentleman he sent me his chart and he's looking for longs in here and there's some second entry longs look here's one right here pull back actually that's not a new high here's a new high first entry second entry and didn't go very far but in this volatility you still could have got a scalp out of that you made a new high right there pull back first entry second entry. there was a second entry long you probably would have got burned on that one but here's here's one that you might have actually taken notice the new high and you're running down you get a first entry and then you make a second leg down this didn't really quite make an equal low there this is higher so it's an inside bar but if that was an equal low that could be your signal bar and you might go long right there just because it's probably going to come back and try to test this EMA and try to test this breakout one more time and we tried several times to come back and we couldn't and that's telling you that it's there's the selling's getting stronger and we start working lower so uh but let me read the, the email that somebody sent me let me find that email. okay i'm going to read you this gentleman's email because it really uh, fits in with my whole message today and so it's just funny how i'm thinking thinking of this video and then during the video uh, or i get an email from somebody and it just confirms what i'm trying to teach people uh but anyway listen to this email hey mac I just wanted to report back to you and let you know that I had a really good week. I'm 24 years old. This this guy's 24 years old. I first started looking into trading three years ago. Listen to that. Three years ago. So he's been at this a long time. Uh, but I stumbled upon your website sometime in December of 2019. It's been a roller coaster, but I feel like I'm finally starting to be consistent. My biggest issue, this this is the part I want you to hear in this email, so please listen. Listen closely. My biggest issue was not the price action you teach. I think I picked that up in a few weeks. Most people can. However, the psychology was the most difficult part for me. I have an anxiety order or disorder and was making a lot of impulsive trades out of fear. But I want to stop right there and clarify something. Uh, regardless of whether he has an anxiety disorder, this is still hard mentally. It's still so everybody's going to go through this so it may not even have been his anxiety or he may have just attributed it to that because he thought it maybe it was just him but everybody goes through this so listen because here comes the good part it wasn't until i started taking care of my mental health with the help of a professional psychologist that I finally made the turn in my trading i realized that i just listen i realized that i just had to sit and do nothing till a setup comes up near the key entry points i mean I couldn't have written I mean it sounds like me talking which is very difficult to do I'm even trying to teach my father how to trade and he's having a very hard time being patient one day I saw him take 30 trades in an hour haha ha. yeah that's a lot of trades in an hour so 
anyway, sorry for the long email. I just wanted to thank you again for the daily videos. My win rate right now for this month is around 90%. If you ignore the few break evenings, and my win rate for the week is 100%. I mean, people tell me all the time, you can't do that. That's impossible. Guess what? He just did it. Look, we might get another second entry setting up over here. We're not quite back down to support either. So uh, we may get a, another second entry. Uh, but anyway, let me show you his trading here. 26 winners, 3 losers. 71, almost 72% win rate. That's his monthly. What's the other one? Here's his weekly. 13 winners, no losers. Man, that's great. That's that's exciting for me because it validates that what I do is worth my time and effort. Because if he's the only guy that has success, it was worth it to me. I mean, I, I get a little emotional about this stuff sometimes, but I'm just telling you, that makes, and, and I don't mean it makes me feel good because it validates me or anything uh, or, or proves that I'm right and everybody else is wrong. It, it makes me feel good because that's why I do this. So that maybe I can change somebody else's life, help somebody else. So uh, anyway, I apologize um, for maybe dragging this out too long, but, uh, but this guy validates it for me. And he, that shows you that it's not just Mac that can do this. Mac doesn't just make this up. Other people do this. I get, I get emails like this a lot. Not everybody. Trust me. Most people, 90% probably fail, but 10% of them are going to make it because they get it and he gets it. So, um, I'm going to say this one more time. This, you, you saw how easy I made that trade look. I made 30, how many points did I say I made there? 30 points in just five minutes. And it looks simple, but trust me, it's not simple. When you got that kind of, when you got 20 contracts sitting there at $3,000 a contract for margin, and it's going against you like it went against me for a minute there, that makes you do all kind of craziness. So learn to be patient, people. Learn to be patient. Learn, you, you, you got to be emotionless. You saw I was pretty emotionless. I didn't let it bother me. I trusted my read. I left my trade there, and I let it go. And we may get a second entry short here. We got two legs back. The only problem is we're above the EMA. Uh, we're still finding resistance right here. So uh, if it gave you a good setup there, it might be worth taking. Did we actually break lower? No. I don't think we did. I think we got a match in low. Well, there it went. It triggered anyway. And there would have been you another second entry. So uh, you would have already scalped out and be working lower on your runner. That one worked out easier and quicker than my than the one I took. So uh, I took two trades on my own this morning. And I took the trade you saw me tra trade a minute ago. I wish I had taken that one, but I'll... It just triggered so fast. It, it's, you got to be ready. I mean, you can't be. And that's the other thing. The one reason I don't videotape a lot of my trades, people say, why don't you videotape your trading? It, it, you know, look, as soon as I start videotaping my trading, it automatically starts interfering. You got to be concentrating on what you're doing. And, and you can't be trying to run a video recorder while you're trading. Sure, you can do that occasionally. But it's not something you want to do every day with if you're trading live. Sure, I could probably do it on the simulator, but it, it doesn't mean as much. You know, people say, oh, well, it was a simulator or this or that. And just to show you, I mean, that, that's a guarantee. Somebody will probably say, oh, well, you were probably um, doing replay. Well, I'm going to show you. You see, here's my computer. It's uh, April 9th, 1.35. You can see we're, we're 130, 135 on my chart right there. Let me just show you something else here, too. Just to make sure people know that. Because somebody will say that, guaranteed. Somebody will say, oh, he was running replay. Well, is he going to open? Here we go.
Time Central Standard Time. And you can see it. 1.36 p.m. Thursday, April 9th. Just what I just what I just told you. So um, so that way you can at least see that I didn't I'm not running replay. This is live right at the right at 136. Basically now we're in the 136 minute bar. Or 13, so that's 136. So if you know for people that don't know military time, that might be a little hard to figure out. But anyway. I'm trying to think if there was anything else. I'm going to pause it just one second because it seems like there was something else I wanted to talk about before I wrap this day up. And um, I want to get my bearings straight here before I do. Okay. Well, anyway, I can't um, I can't think of anything else that's critically important. But the, the, the thing I want you to take away from this video is that um, be patient wait on prices to come to the key entry points don't be just steadily amateurs are just looking for a trade everywhere in any direction professionals know where the trades happen and how they set up and they wait for prices to come there uh, just like here when it came up here i was expecting to get a chance to go short notice how prices trended up here we had a spike in channel up and i was expecting then we had a break and a new high and i was expecting to get a short up here once we had a new high in place, but I had to be patient and wait on one. And we really, we actually did have a very good trade right here. Notice that swing low is lower than that one. So you get a first entry and a second entry short way away from the EMA with a nice bearish bar. So drop your sell stop one tick below there. And unfortunately you didn't get a runner here because this backed up and took it. If you're going to break even. But what you might do is just risk whatever you want on your trade and put your stop there. And because if you do that, you can ride this thing the whole way down because you'd have a runner going. You know, you don't have to scalp and you don't have to be a scalper. You can still use our scalp and run strategy to get into long term trades with. And once you get past the scalp, you've got no risk in there. Because that's what gets most people. You you get an entry like I had right here, and it moves a little bit, and then it comes back, and it stops out there, break even stop, and eventually it ends up going lower. But they got stopped out trying to catch that runner, and they don't make any money. The way we do it, you at least make a little money. But if you really just want to be a swing trader, you can use this strategy, and, and you catch those kind of trades, and you catch this run. And you don't have the only risk you have is the very initial in entry plus whatever you scalped out on put your stop right there and so if you scalped out with you know four ticks then use those four ticks as your break-even point and then I'll want and if you're wrong then all you lose is your commission and you don't lose any money other than your commission so there's different ways to do this so I prefer to scalp out, put some money in my, I mean, you saw what I did on a quick scalp. I made 30 points. And I moved my stop to break even. Actually, I moved it to break even plus one. That's what gave me the, uh, but it, it didn't matter because I, I didn't get stopped out on my runner there. So I was still able to make three points or whatever it was off of my, runners so i hope that's helpful i hope that makes sense but remember tomorrow's good friday no trading tomorrow i'm taking off tomorrow and saturday i might work a little bit sunday afternoon but i would ask everybody to please hold your uh, trading questions until monday because uh, i really need a couple of days off uh, this has been really tough for me uh, lately because Nobody else can answer the email trading question. Sure, I can hire, let my part-timer do some of the other stuff, but uh, I'm a little, you know, I've let her stay home because of the virus and the shutdown. And, you know, we probably don't need to be around each other right now because I, I don't know where she's been and she doesn't know where I've been. So really, I'm having to do it all by myself now. And, and when it comes to the trading questions, nobody else can answer those but me anyway. So... Uh, Again, I'll just ask you to save your questions till the end of the, uh, till Monday. Don't ask me any over the weekend. Please, if you've got time, study and study your charts. That's 
you know, that's the way I did it. You know, every, every day off, every night, every holiday, every day I wasn't doing something. I was studying charts because that's how you get better. But so study if you can. Uh, just please hold any trading questions or uh, study questions until Monday so I can kind of get a break without having to come back Monday and be swamped uh, from stuff just piling up over the weekend. So I appreciate that and I appreciate everybody. And uh, again, I hope the little example was helpful. But what I want you to take away from that more than anything is not that I showed you an example of a, a, a live trade. Uh, but take take away from it how you know how easy that looked and it, it's not easy by any stretch and uh, so when you see people post videos on the internet promising you can make an easy five hundred dollars a day don't believe it you can't do it you've got to learn this language first sure you might get lucky and make a few but you'll trust me in a few you can blow a fifty thousand dollar account in a month if you don't know what you're doing and there's no way you can come in here with a $2,500 account right now with this volatility and not know what you're doing. Now, if you've already proven on SIM and you've been tr SIM trading and doubled a $10,000 SIM account, then you probably could get on here with your $2,500 account and, and do okay. But if you're just learning and you just started, saw your first video two or three weeks ago or even two or three days ago, like some of you think, because I, I mean, literally, I'm getting emails that people are just frustrated and pulling their hair out because they can't get it. Well, the whole problem is you don't even, you're in kindergarten and you got to get a PhD before you trade live. I mean, that's the best example I can give you. If you've been trading less than six months, you're in kindergarten. I don't care where you studied or what you studied before. And you know, a lot of people say, well, I've been trading a long time before this. Well, that probably helps you some. But in most cases, my experience is you learned all the wrong things and it hampers you more than it helps you. There's nothing I like better than somebody that actually understands the markets but doesn't really have any previous learning from other people. Those people come in and get it much quicker than anybody because they, they don't, their head's not filled with all the hogwash that people, that really is perceived as the golden standard in trading. And it's hogwash. And nobody else is going to tell you that. You'll only probably hear that from me. And, and again, it's nothing, not because I'm special, just because I'm not trying to sell you something. That's the bottom line. So anyway, I'm going to try to get off my uh, soapbox here. I'm going to start my weekend here shortly. I'm done. Uh, I've got a few more emails I'm going to catch up to. Anything that's come in to this point, I'm going to try to answer before I leave today. And if you would, please just don't, don't send me any trading questions till uh, next Monday. And I hope everybody has a great uh, Easter weekend. And uh, I know that we got a lot of craziness going on in the world. Be safe. Uh, hopefully you can spend some time with your families and so forth. And I hope everybody's well and, and that your families are well. And so we'll be back to do it Monday. I'm done for today, done for the week, and done for the weekend. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.